Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Sisso here, bringing you guys yet another video here today, bringing you guys a Photoshop tutorial on how to create your own fun banner design like UI. Alright, so the thought process, hear me, hear me out for a second, the thought process of this uh, project was to pretty much kind of sort of put together different things when I think of motion or like UI motion designing. I don't really know, I was just like floating around with like YouTube and just kind of seeing, um, like I, just, I wanted to get into like, you know, UI animations and stuff like that, because uh, Illustrator or After Effects and stuff like that, trying to work around with it, but so basically, I try to put it all together in a way with this really cool concept, and I kind of sort of figured, um, you know, like these little dots, and like you feel like these dots would be moving or something like that, or like this thing would be spinning in the middle, or, you know, I want to think UI, I think a lot of like gradients working around with, and uh, this is kind of the, the end result, and I think it looks really, really good. I love the minimal kind of feel that you got kind of get to it. I also, for some reason, think like music almost for some reason, not really sure why, but I do. And so basically, it's, it's pretty easy, however, it's just like touchy to detail kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and get this thing going. Of course, two likes on the video equals a secret down below, which most likely be the PSD of this video here today that we are showing you guys right now. I'm showing you guys right now. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I called it UI. I'm probably not going to have that in a title because it has nothing to do about UI, but it's kind of sort of the, the thought process I had. So let's go ahead and get this thing going. First off is, of course, this background, I believe it does not matter whatsoever because we're going to be using a gradient fill and not a gradient map, so it's going to pretty much fill the banner design with the actual gradient itself. So the first thing you want to do is start off with the color correction. So to go ahead and get this thing going. Um, also, I don't know why this is like, for some reason, it's got really big. Usually this would be like, you know, half the size. Anyone know why? That's it's, it's kind of awkward and weird. Um, so, OK, bear, uh, where is gradient fill? This one is the gradient fill. So the one I'm going to be using is this gradient right here. Now, pretty much my gradient starts off with the color picker or color choice hex code 307BCF. It's a simple, really nice, simple blue, right? And then for my secondary color, I have a nice little uh, very vibrant kind of green going on here. The hex code for this one is 4EE6B2. And pretty much this is the color that I kind of chose. I, I wanted to use definitely green and blue. I figured these two colors mix pretty well so far together. However, I did... Uh, kind of change the colors just a little bit more with a color picker or excuse me color balance Which I'll be doing in a second as well So if you guys want to copy the same color to have a uh, color code that I have here go for it Either way you can just kind of scroll through and kind of figure out what other colors you think would work This wouldn't be bad at all on um, this green here and this other green So it just all depends on what you kind of want to go for for the gradient and once you figure that out you press ok and you press OK again, and then you have your gradient fill That's why I said this background it does not matter whatsoever. So that's why I'm not worrying about it Okay, so color balance here over here I'm gonna put this UI thing let's put this on the bottom of everything so it doesn't really matter oh no we will put it on top because we want to make sure if we want to go back and see it I'll show you guys you know all right so anyway for this I already kind of have like a preset that I wanted and the preset that I wanted was a uh, negative 20 and then 45 for the green kind of making a little more just kind of more vibrant in a way and then 25 for the bluish kind of tint here and you kind of see it I pretty much smoothed it out just a little bit with the color balance as you can see it still looks kind of harsh in a way. I can't really express the way I'm kind of like trying to explain it. However, it looks pretty harsh in a way, right? But when I put this color fill on, it kind of feels a little more smoother. And that's kind of sort of why I went to color balance to figure out my gradient, how I wanted to have it. So next is, let's go ahead and go to the uh, curves here. We're going to do a nice, simple, very simple, small S curve. Nothing dramatic, but a very simple S curve. That just kind of like makes it a little more vibrant. I, I I love curves and I I just feel like you should you know add them every once in a while. Um, brightness and contrast. This is some pretty simple. You want to have about five, and then seventy five, and this will just make it extremely bright. And the reason why we're doing all this now is because we're of course gonna add in, what do you call it? A a mountain. I, what is this called? Pentogo. Put, 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 yep. Not even gonna try and pronounce that. It's mountains basically, and I want to add a picture in the background. Excuse me, that's the whole point. So, we're gonna go ahead really quickly. I already have my little nice little rulers. If you don't have your rulers up, Control R brings up these rulers here. I have mine set to the C where the middle of the actual design is, the actual canvas is. You pretty much just like, let's just take this one out for now. Uh, you pretty much just take the left or horizontal, vertical, whichever one you want to do first, and you pretty much kind of guess where the middle is. You'll you'll guess pretty simple or pretty close because you'll find that you're gonna see like a snapping action happening which is trying to indicate, Photoshop, Photoshop is trying to indicate that this is the middle of the document. So you see the little snapping thing there? That's where I have my stuff done and that's how I kind of fix that. And the reason for that is I'm going to be using the ellipse marquee tool. 
this tool is going to give me a circle. Simple, right? So if you hold Alt and Shift with this tool, if holding Alt will make it make sure it's a perfect um, circle at all times, or well, it will, excuse me, it'll keep it in the same orientation at all times. Holding Shift, as you can see, it makes it into a perfect circle at all times while you're making sure it's also staying in the same point. That's what holding Alt and Shift is doing while you're using the Ellipse Marquee tool. So if I click in the middle, somewhere around the middle, kind of measure out my crosshairs with the actual rulers here. And now I'm just going to move it up a little bit, hold Alt now, and then hold Shift. And I'm going to bring it out just a bit. Let's say like right there. Perfect. So there's my perfect circle right in the middle, dead smack in the middle. And we're going to make sure this is completely a solid white. So all Fs. And then we're going to go ahead and just on that new layer, we're going to pretty much just fill it in with, I press Alt Backspace because I changed my foreground color to white. If you want, so you can right click, fill, drop down, use white. That is okay as well. It does not really matter which one you do, however, which whatever kind of like floats your boat, right? So now that I have this thing going on here, I'm going to pretty much just do one thing now, which is going to be adding in this wallpaper and the pronunciation or the pronunciation of that word. What is this? Patagonia? I feel like I should know how to say that. I don't know how to say it though. However, I'm going to go ahead and just make this a little bit bigger than my actual canvas. Find out where I kind of want my mounts to be. And I'll say like right here. So for this, I'm going to actually set up my, uh, my, excuse me, my picture on luminosity. We're going to put it on luminosity. We're going to drop this down to 25%. And with this, I'm going to make sure this is always going to be below my white circle. Let's, let's name this white circle. Um, did anyone else spell circle back in the day with a U or was that, or was that my only read? That was just my, 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 okay. That was just a me thing when I was younger. Okay. So let's go ahead and take these little mountains. I'm just going to call this picture for now. So you guys all know the picture and what we're going to do with this little picture is kind of fix it just a little bit. Cause I, I, of course, usually always leave it on luminosity, lower the opacity and that works for me. However, I want a very smooth, clean transition throughout the entire banner design. And I don't want anything to pop out so much. And if I leave it like this, it will end up not looking like this. As you see, my mountains in the background here, they don't like pop out crazy and they don't look like they're trying to be the, the center of attention. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on my picture and right above my picture, which is why I clicked on it, is I'm going to put a brightness and contrast in. For this brightness and contrast, I'm going to lower this brightness to 101, negative 101, excuse me, and then my contrast to around 65. And then I'm just going to make sure that I right click clipping mask this onto only my picture. That way, as you can see, you kind of get rid of all these harsh uh, kind of tones that you get when you put it on luminosity over this background here. And it looks really, really good. It looks way better. It kind of just completely changes the the aspect of it, not making it seem like it's trying to pop out and be the main set of retention. So this would be like added detail and looks cool. And it works for me and it hopefully works for you too. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna pretty much bring up my rulers again. I'm gonna use my ellipse tool again, click in the middle here. And then we're gonna make a very simple blue uh, circle in the middle. So with this, I'm just gonna, I don't think the color matters again, cause we're just gonna use our, uh, what do we call it? We're gonna use our, what is this thing called? Oh God, the, the CC, geez, I completely blanked out. Cause what we're gonna do, like I said, I'm, like I just said, I'm gonna use the CC. So I'm gonna use actually everything here. Um, but yeah, pretty much just copy everything. So I'm just gonna simply hold Alt after click on every, everything in the gradient and then uh, hold Alt and drag it right above that blue circle that we just made or whatever color circle, it doesn't really matter. This is a secondary uh, color circle within that white circle. And we're just gonna clippy mask this right in there. And then we're gonna lower opacity down on our actual thing here. Uh, that will work. Do you guys hear what the hell is that? I, I can actually probably turn off this brightness and contrast as well. And kind of leave it like this. This works for me. So I just I just pretty much did everything else besides that brightness and contrast that was on the picture. And now it's simply in this blue circle. I'm gonna group all this together so it's not so much. But this is the blue circle in the middle that basically now has the same gradient and the same picture in the actual circle now, which looks really good. Now the one thing I did not remember to do is get my logo out of here. So let's just quickly copy my logo out of there. And then make sure our logo is right above that blue circle. And here we go. So we're pretty much at the point where you can start seeing the whole construction 
form and we're looking good and pretty much now it's just all about maybe added detail now because realistically we're kind of done with most of the things that like make the actual design look crazy good um if you want to choose to do this right now you can do so i'm gonna make a new layer above my picture right my original background picture here and above my brightness and contrast so on this here i'm gonna make my uh, my brush white so my foreground color white and i'm gonna use a soft brush and i'm gonna go ahead and just sort of like Add a couple splotches of white and just some areas here put it on overlay and then kind of lower the opacity down a bit just to try to get a little more color flow going or a little more like kind of vibrant mixture kind of thing going you kind of see the whole difference here just trying to fill out some spots that kind of maybe look a little dark in some areas and just kind of like light it up just a little bit just a little bit of that and we're just gonna go ahead and add we're gonna call this what like white brush hit sure we'll call it white brush hit and then pretty much now, we're gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of that. Actually, we'll just add this in right now, why not? We'll add in a simple brush hit right on the top, just like so. Right, a nice, very simple brush hit. We'll load this out on like maybe 75 or so. And then pretty much now, I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer above my blue circle here uh, and my logo. And I'm going to pretty much, again, take out my rulers and how I'm hiding them and rehiding them or redoing them is control H. And I'm going to pretty much just go ahead and do this. We're going to pretty much say like a little more than the middle, uh, kind of like the middle between this. So just a little bit bigger than our original, or excuse me, a little smaller than our original big white circle. And we're going to do is we're going to select closest color I think to there so around just select a blue within this uh, circle here if you're using blue or whatever just select the color that s resembles the actual colors that are going around your actual design and we're gonna right click um stroke here and actually you shouldn't select it yet in this color picker in the stroke color picker pick the color that closest resembles and I think eight is a pretty good size stroke and then we're gonna go ahead and do something like this now what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna duplicate it with control J and I'm press control T and I'm gonna hold Alt and Shift and make it smaller. Just like so. And then pretty much now I'm gonna go ahead and do, and if I want to, I'll just like move that a little bit closer. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is kind of pick some spots and sort of literally just erase a bit. So I'm just gonna go around this right here and I'm erasing this whole entire thing. So making sure I don't touch it. So when I right click make selection and press delete, it will delete it and that looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now is probably delete all this here on the outside ring, like this. And this is all, this is literally just personal preference. What do you wanna delete? Where you wanna delete it? Even if you don't wanna do this, sure. It just kinda of fills space in on the outside circle. Or, uh, excuse me, kinda of just creates more space or just creates more fun. I don't really know. Uh, and we'll go ahead and do something like this. And this is on the inside one, so I'll delete that there and maybe probably just delete a little bit here i hate system sounds i really don't know why that's on and it's kind of bothering me let's go ahead and not put system sounds on i swear i have to God, i hate that anyone else turn nerves off um okay boom so kind of sort of like something like this right it's kind of weird a little bit i probably should have erased more um not in like the kind of the same spot here which looks kind of weird so i'm gonna go ahead and really quickly actually just we're gonna group these two layers together and we're gonna actually just cut these out really quick layer via cut and we're sort of just gonna go ahead rotate them like this and maybe just like oh god I'm free balling this but let's just pretend that this is like that like that's let's pretend that this is the perfect thing here okay this looks this is working okay this works a little bit i didn't mean to cut out like kind of sort of the same exact shape going on just kind of like make it a little more sporadic that's why i'm kind of getting bothered a little bit however it's fine and then we're just going to call this the i guess blue lines in the middle so that we can all follow here i know i didn't space it however that works and we're pretty much good to go for the rest of the stuff so one of the main things i have within this actual concept here is the whole kind of like the fun kind of dots that go around here. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and you see what I mean by, I also made mine a little more smaller, but you see how I kind of made this like a full circle and only cut out like, you yeah, you see what I meant, right? And this just looks a little more weirder because I have these big, really big lines. So I'm gonna kind of just quickly see if I can fix that. 
just by kind of sort of modifying it a little bit. Let's just quickly, what would that look like? Does that look weird or does that look better? I don't know. We're going to just leave it like that for now though. However, the blue circles, right? So I'm going to quickly go ahead and do the blue circles. So I'm going to go ahead and just do them right below our white circle here. So we're going to make a new layer and it's going to be a lot of copy and pasting. However, it's going to be very simple copy and pasting. So I'm going to use my elliptical or ellipse tool, excuse me. And we're going to go ahead and make a very simple small dot here, just like so. And then we're going to fill this small dot in with white. Very simple stuff here, right? And then pretty much now what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to hold alt and shift. Holding alt will make the duplicate. Holding shift will make sure it stays in the same exact orientation. And we're, you're going to see where it says this little down arrow where it says 0, 0.0 and then 0.58. So I'm going to just go to where it says 0. 0.62. And then every time I let go and then start a new circle in that same exact duplication, I'm going to just make sure I put it on 6.2. If I can kind of find it. Uh, we're just going to move it up twice. And then do the same thing here, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, perfect. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to group these all together with control G, shift click on all of them, control G to group them. And these are all pretty much in the same exact, uh, you know, kind of the same spacing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold alt and shift again, but move them over to the left, just like so. And I'm going to make them, some of them really close, right? And then some of them really far, farther away. Uh, I'll just make this one like kind of even or whatever. And this one's going to be like super far away like that. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Make some super close. Pretty far. We'll make this like really close. And then like pretty far like that. Right? And this kind of this kind of makes it more sporadic. And that's kind of why I did that. And with all these groups, you can either just group them together. Right? I'm going to call this back up. Because I'm going to control J to make a duplicate of it again, this whole entire group. I'll get rid of this one. I'll make it red. I'll just hide it for now. And then with this backup copy with all these different groups inside, control E to add, then merge it in together. Now, for this reason that I'm doing that, I just want to make sure I can remove, erase things that I want to erase and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do really quickly is I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. And with this new layer, I'm going to use my pen tool. Now, with this, you're going to make sure, when because you, when you're actually going to make your pen tool here, uh, let's say if I want to make a line to here to here. <laughs> what I want to do is make sure I want to what I, what I want to do is right click stroke path and then use my brush settings But before you do that you want to make sure you change your brush settings. So on my brush. I press B on my keyboard Right click make your size around 2 and then make your hardness 100 and that way when you do fill this in with your path It's gonna be a two size 100 hardness. So it's gonna be basically a line and you're set to go so stroke path right uh, excuse me tools and then go to brush and then press OK, right click, delete your path. And as you can see, there's that little line that's going to be formed. So pretty much you want to do this kind of sporadically. Um, I'm just not going to, you know, or kind of let's make sure it's always straight lines, though. So holding shift will always make sure it's a straight line when you actually go ahead and click it with your pen tool. And uh, OK, and then let's say one like right here. And let's say one right here, not too many, right? I'm not doing a lot of them. And then one right here that's super close. This one's really awkward looking. We're gonna go ahead and just move this one down a little bit. There we go, merge that back together. And then one like maybe right here. Let's go ahead and move that like that. And then just like so. So pretty much you're just making these little lines, right? And then now what I'm going to really quickly do is I'm just going to simply click on uh, control click on both of these, which will select both of them. And then tr free transform is control T and then just simply rotate it like so. Just on a simple, simple little angle here. And then we're just going to let that go or we'll make it a little bit bigger without trying to rasterize or excuse me, kind of ruin the quality of these circles here. And I think that. Mm, this will work here. So what I'm gonna do now is on my backup copy, the reason why I merge it together because I wanna use my eraser. So with my eraser, I'm gonna go with my eraser here and make it a 100% hardness brush. And then just simply make it small enough so I don't select too many dots. But I'm gonna start deleting some of these dots that are close to the actual kind of thing here. Just like delete a few of them. I'm trying to do it in the most random way, but your brain does not work like that. And we're just gonna just, you know, delete them. Like so, 
Uh, which one should be deleted? This one. I'm probably like tilting all of you guys. You're like, pick this one. Nah, we're picking like that. All right, that's perfectly fine. That looks good. So really quickly on this backup copy, I'm gonna go ahead and actually uh, take a duplicate of it again. So Control J, and then uh, show it. Just kind of unhide it. But we'll just make this orange for now, so you guys know the difference. And then Control E again. Control T. And we're gonna make them smaller and we're gonna make sure we're, it's on the same kind of axis that it was on uh, these other other ones right all these other other ones all these other other ones that's not a, that's not how you that's not how you word things um we'll say like just like this will work just a little bit okay so you want to just basic, basically kind of make smaller dots and really quickly to kind of distinguish which ones are which i'm gonna make these red now the reason why i did this i'm gonna drag these below the actual backup here so you can kind of get the difference between them and we're gonna make a new layer again however we're gonna go ahead and just kind of sort of do the same exact thing as we did before and we're gonna go ahead and stroke path i think it should still be fixed right okay cool and we'll put some like we'll connect these as well you can go diagonals this time on the smaller ones right just like that and we'll do like this one here or is that too close to the other one it doesn't really matter for now and then sort of maybe like this one right here. I'm gonna do a lot of ones that just like have diagonals and I wanna do that because I just want to. Let's make sure we use the red ones, these are the newer ones. Uh, stroke path, brush. And then we'll do one like, is that a good enough? Maybe like one right here. Just like so. All right, cool. So, oops, not fill. Stroke. And then just like that. And then pretty much now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to make sure I'm going to actually erase a lot of these other red dots. Um, Just like this. Kind of remove the ones that are really close to the other lines here. Uh, like that one right there. Like this one right there. This one right there. Boom. Let's remove these. Oops. Let's keep that one, of course. Remove that. Remove this. This one, these don't need to be here. Um, neither does that one. And that kind of works, right? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna undo this whole color overlay thing. And I'm gonna pretty much just click on both of these two things right here, which are gonna be the new things that we just made. And we're gonna put these on overlay. And it's just gonna look a little cooler and it just kind of looks good to me. And I that's kind of how I did it before. And I love how it looks. So that's just the whole point of that. Just kind of make these really fun little dots here. And these little lines here are tilting the hell out of me. Um, but it's gonna it's gonna work. It's gonna work out. I just should have made my stroke a little smaller when I did that. Alright, so pretty much last but not least, kind of little stuff that you want to do here is above everything, you want to go ahead and select the blue around your screen here. I'll select like this one right here. On a simple brush right a soft brush so zero hardness this time bigger diameter and we're gonna simply just click a couple times like so and we're gonna put this on screen that's why you pick the color that kind of resembles what we kind of have going around here put it on screen it looks a lot better when you do so if you want to go around the edges you can a little bit don't go crazy however that looks pretty good and then we're gonna simply put a nice little brightness and contrast in here as well Let's put in a negative 15, not 150, and then a nice 50, positive 50 for your contrast here. Kind of brings it out just a little bit more. And then some little other stuff that I did was behind my white circle here, I made a new layer. I took my ellipse tool again, and we made this a big, pretty big circle here. You can make this circle whatever color you want. I'm going to make it white, however, for now. And then on this circle that we just made be uh, below our white circle, is we're going to make it dissolve. And we're gonna lower our opacity down and dissolve is gonna basically, of course, dissolve the circle that we just created. And if you wanna put it low, maybe to like 1% is like perfect because it kind of gives you the least amount of particles as possible. And if you wanna take your eraser and possibly erase a little bit around, just to kind of give like a little more aesthetic kind of feel. If you wanna do the same exact thing within your blue circle, which was right here, if you wanna do the same thing here, make a simple circle in the middle, color it in with white, put it on dissolve, make it 1%. And then kind of erase a little bit around so there's not so many of them and then last but not least let's go ahead and what else can i do here uh hmm i think we're pretty much done i think we're actually pretty much done uh the one thing i did do however was i made a new layer above everything again and we're gonna make a pretty big circle bigger as before just like so 
and a simple white soft brush. And we're gonna go ahead and just go around our banner design, or excuse me, go around our our ellipse here that we just made. And we're gonna kind of make an aurora effect almost. Control D to deselect, put this on overlay, and then sort of erase on that layer a little bit, just like so, erase the sides. And kind of get this really nice aurora kind of effect here. Put the opacity down a little bit. Looks good. Right, there we go. And we're pretty much done at this point. Like, it, as you can see now, it's just literally up to you at this point. If you got, if you guys want to add more brightness and contrast or a color correction or whatever the heck you guys want to add, it will work. It looks cool. It's fun. However, these blue lines here are tilting me on no, like, literally, let's just steal the ones that are here. Uh, where are they? Yeah, these. Let's just steal these for now and say we made these. These are nicer, right? Because it, it just really bothered me. Um, there we go. So that's pretty much the tour here today. I hope you guys did enjoy. As I said before, the more time you, of course, take on I just want to kind of explain how I did everything, of course. Um, if you take more time on, like, I guess the way you place your, your um, how do you say? The way you place, uh, kind of like, what do I want to say? The way you place your lights or your colors and stuff like that if i if you see the difference here i see i have more kind of like light distribution that kind of just works a little bit better to my favor excuse me um so if i just click on this one a little bit i have a lot more light going on here it's because i just kind of like put it there and didn't really like look at the concept however so of course at the end you kind of want to experiment and kind of be like you know which which kind of direction i want to go with the light and kind of figure it all out and like you'll find yourself really liking it a lot but i love to use pictures in my little simplistic videos here and i love to kind of figure out how to use them in like really awesome ways and i definitely wanted to use the pure color white in this tutorial here today because of course yeah i just i just really wanted to and you can see here i also did do a little bit of erasing on these lines uh if you want to kind of i kind of want to do the same thing I, if i wanted to where are the lines these are right here right on these lines Take a soft brush eraser and kind of like erase them a little bit just like that and then do the same thing here kind of just makes it look like it's in motion or something like that looks pretty good oops i'm not i just noticed i'm probably not yeah there we go all right right so hopefully you guys enjoyed i'll talk to you guys later do not forget to follow me on twitter at sesso hq check out my selfie selfie.com slash sesso hq for any premiums and packs is always three bucks Talk to you guys in the next one. If you guys have yet to subscribe to me, please go ahead and subscribe. Comment down anything below that you guys would like to see me do. Tweet them at me. Tweet me all of your fun little things that you made for my tutorials and stuff like that. I probably will retweet them. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a great weekend, a great day, and I'll talk to you guys later. Sesso HQ out. Peace. Don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later.